California's wildfires are getting worse. In fact, six of the state's most destructive wildfires have happened in the last four years. In 2018 alone, fires scorched nearly two million acres. It was California's deadliest and most destructive wildfire season ever recorded. This year, the electric company PG&E even preemptively shut off power in areas of Northern California to reduce the risk of igniting a blaze. So are the prevention techniques we're currently using enough? Or is there something more Californians can do to control these wildfires? Fire management and prevention can look very different depending on which part of the state you live in. We have two very different types of fires that are driven by two very different factors. Uh, many of our fires occur in the northern part of the state, in the Sierra Nevada. And the primary reason for some of Northern California's most severe forest fires is a buildup of brush on the forest floor. Historically, California forests naturally cleared this brush through smaller, more frequent fires. But with the founding of the U.S. Forest Service in the early 1900s, the U.S. government began putting out these fires. We have many forests uh, in the northern part of the state that have gone a century without fire. And that was one of the most important factor in, factors in the Northern California fires of 2018. So in Northern California, one effective method of dealing with this accumulation of fuels is prescribed burning. The goal is to light a fire under safe conditions in order to clear out the dead plants and underbrush that can act as fuel for the most severe, uncontrollable wildfires. Fires will burn no matter what, but with this technique, firefighters can control when, where, and how much they burn. If you talk to people who fight fires, they'll tell you there's no question in their mind that they can see the change in fire behavior when they reach a prescribed burn area and how much easier it is to extinguish the fire once it reaches those areas. But between 1998 and 2018, less than 3% of all controlled burns in the country happened in California. And that's pretty low when you consider that more wildfires have burned in California over the last five years than in every other U.S. state except Texas. But prescription burns wouldn't work everywhere. In fact, in Southern California, it might actually make things worse due to a number of reasons, including the most obvious, being near large metropolitan areas. The devastating campfire, for instance, happened as a result of extreme wind conditions not from a buildup of dense brush. So when it comes to wind-driven fires, here are some things Californians can do to protect their homes. The type of eaves you have on your home can make a big difference in whether your home survives or is burned. An eave is basically the edge of a roof, and having closed eaves makes it harder for embers to enter the home. Other things like single pane versus double pane windows, not surprisingly, thicker windows will do a better job of standing up to high heat than thinner windows. Clearing dried leaves and brush off of your roof and gutters leaves less litter for fires to catch flame. By installing a sprinkler system on your roof, you can catch embers early on and prevent rooftops and other homes from igniting. Planting more well-watered trees around buildings can also increase the chances of a structure surviving a wildfire. We often think the best way to protect our homes is to get rid of all the vegetation around the home, but it turns out in these wind-driven fires, when you completely clear the landscape, the winds blow unobstructed across your landscape and bring embers right to your home. If you have trees that are green, those trees can actually collect the embers, what we call ember catchers. Cutting off power to homes can also help. Dry, windy weather compounded by extreme drought conditions and an expanding power grid have made the perfect environment for power line sparks to ignite massive wildfires. In the last decade, probably our worst fires, at least wind-driven fires, have been ignited by power line failures. But cutting power alone isn't a long-term fix for this problem. A utility company could respond to this. One could be to put in underground power lines, and then you have less chance of a failure in igniting a fire. California fires are also compounded by the state's growing population. You see, the majority of wildfires are human-caused. So a bigger population means more chances for arson and accidental fires 
that can grow out of control. So a longer term solution for this could be better community planning. We need to think better about how to plan uh, communities, but part of the problem is, is the state's growing. And just in the last 20 years, we see this massive increase in fires. Well, we've also had six million more people added to the state. The next 30 years, we're gonna see another 20 million. And so we need to think, how do we plan communities so that we can reduce the possibility that people will ignite these fires during extreme uh, wind events? And finally, combating global warming will also play a crucial role in the future of California's wildfires. According to a recent report, Northern California summers have gotten 2.5 degrees warmer since 1970. Hotter weather causes drier dry seasons and especially affects areas like Northern California forests. Slowing down or stopping this warming trajectory could potentially play a role in the intensity and severity of wildfires in the years to come.